Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for Engineering Mechanics Statics by R.C. Hibbler, this textbook here. So uh, we have this problem in chapter two where it states, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Uh, so this is a fairly simple problem. All it will involve is breaking each of these forces down into their horizontal and vertical components and then adding the horizontal components together, adding the vertical components together, determining the magnitude of the resultant force and determining its direction. So this is a fairly simple problem. Let's go ahead then and start off by resolving horizontally. We, uh, well, before we do that, uh, let's do what we uh, typically do for problems like this, which is draw a free body diagram. It's, it's already there, but let's just go ahead and draw this anyway. So we've got this three, four, five triangle uh, idea here along this 250 Newton force. That's meant to say three. Uh, we've got this 400 Newton force acting 30 degrees at the horizontal. And we've got this 300 Newton force acting along the horizontal, 250. And let's just complete the geometry here. We don't really need to add a y-axis, do we? Let's add a y-axis, why not? There we go. Okay, awesome. So we have our free body diagram here. Let's go ahead and resolve horizontally. So we could say the uh, sum of the x components here is equal to uh, minus four fifths of 250. Oops. I know that's minus 200, but whatever. Uh, then we've got the horizontal component of this 400 Newton force, we could say 400 cos 30. And we've got this 300 Newton force. Yeah, okay. And when I add all of that together, it gives me 446.4. Awesome, let's move on then and add together the Y components. So uh, in, ca in the case of this 250 Newton force here, it'll have uh, three fifths. Uh, it'll be three fifths of 250. We can add uh, the uh, vertical component of this 400 Newton force, which will be 400 sine 30. And that's all we have acting vertically. And when we add that together, we get a nice 350. Okay, so what this is telling us then about the resultant force is that it's acting uh, 446 to the right and 350 up, 350 up, 446.4 to the right. Uh, and what we're being asked to determine then is its magnitude, which is the hypotenuse here. Evidently to solve for its magnitude, we can use hypotenuse theorem. Hypotenuse theorem? Pythagoras theorem. Uh, so we can, uh, use this idea here, 446.4 squared plus 350 squared, all square rooted. And when we bung that in our calculator, that gives us 567.3. Okay, let's just add that to our diagram, 567.3. We're also being asked to determine its direction. So we can determine its direction uh, relative to the horizontal here. Evidently, we can use any trigonometric ratio we like now, since we have all three sides of this triangle. Uh, let's pick tan. Uh, so in this case, the tan of theta, you know what, let's, let's write this uh, up here, just because there's more space. 
we can say the tan of theta is equal to the opposite of the adjacent. In this case, the opposite is 350. The adjacent is 346.4. Therefore, uh, theta is equal to the if, if, if I take the inverse tan of both sides, I can say that the th that theta is equal to the inverse tan of 350 over 446.4, which when I bung in my calculator, that gives me 38.1 degrees. And there we go, these are our two solutions. So we have a magnitude of uh, 567.3 newtons, and we have an angle with the horizontal of 38.1. Okay, so those are the solutions to our problem here. If you have any uh, questions or comments about that problem, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.